boost. Cool. What's up, what's up? Just waiting for Danny to jump on. <clears throat> hey guys. Just waiting for Danny. And then, go okay, guys. G'day Dave, hope you're well mate. It's been a while. We'll get going in a second, guys. Just waiting for Danny to jump on. Um, get a Nico. Hey, guys. So tonight we're uh, chatting with Danny. Um, here he is. Perfect. Here he is, big fella. How are you? Good, mate. How are you? Very well, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me on. Nah, thanks for your time, mate. Thanks for jumping on with us here at uh, Momentum. How you been? I've been good, man. How about yourself? Mate, been good. Been working through uh, throughout COVID, so that's been handy to, to kind of keep my mind off things. How about you? Has had your business um, change or, or take itself through COVID? Uh, I guess initially it um, like it took a pretty big drop uh, to both sides, like in person and then uh, online as well. But yeah. um, to be honest, like it didn't. Um, obviously, it was a bit stressful, but it didn't stress me out too much. I knew to kind of come back around, and it gave me a good chance to um, spend a bit of time working on a few of the things that I hadn't really had much time to do previously. Um, yeah. And then just build out some new things for when everything co comes back to normal. And um, I guess through like a lot of the, the meditation stuff and the personal development stuff that I've done over the last couple of years, it kind of taught me to just not stress too much about what you can't control anyway. So I put that to good use and um, yeah, just, just kept working to be honest. Like everything, yeah. else, but if the actual where I was training people changes and what you're doing changes a little bit, but in the end of the day, it's all, it's all the same stuff. Just had to get a bit um, creative. And um, I've talked about a few times with people about how um, at times like this, you just need to get resourceful. So when you don't have the resources to, to do what you usually do, it, yeah. it really forces you to get resourceful. So um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. What about yourself? Yeah, good, mate. Hey, I saw you, uh, I saw you hustling on the, on the training side of things. So that's good to hear that you were able to, to keep going. Um, but, yeah, mate, we've just been working a lot on our back end here at Momentum. You know, we do our weekly calls Thursday night in our private Facebook group and then we, uh, we're interviewing people on a Sunday night on Instagram um, to kind of just give as much value as we can. So it's great to have you on um, tonight. So thanks again for your time. I know you've got date night after this, so thanks for pushing, thanks for pushing that out a bit. <laughs> but, mate, we... Um, for those who don't know you from, I guess, that'd be our audience, talk a little bit about, first, your uh, your background. So you, you've been a personal trainer now for how many years? So I did my qualification to become a PT when I was in year 12. So that was 2011. I did that yeah. just separate, separate to school. I did it online, I, I think. I was thinking about this the other day. I can't actually remember how it came about. I think maybe mum mentioned to me that um, there was, at the time, there was some course going and um, for, for PT. And I, at that time, I just really got stuck into the gym and was really loving it. So I just yeah. thought I'd well, do it on the side. I had 12 months to get it done, which is pretty easy for, for the PT course to get done in 12 yeah. months. And just thought at some point it might come in handy and um, turns out it did. So the first couple of years after that, I didn't really, I wasn't, um, I wasn't working as a PT. I moved to Melbourne for basketball for two years. Yeah. And then um, after I had my ankle, I had an ankle Rico at the end of 2013. And after that got stuck straight in. So um, started 2014, started full time. And then since then yeah. just been, um, yeah, full steam ahead. Yeah, yeah. And you, I mean, you've seen, 
plenty of success since then. Now you've been in Men's Health and a few other um, big magazines. You work with, um, you know, Steph Claire Smith, Laura Henshaw in Keep It Cleaner. Is that is that correct? Keep It Cleaner. Yeah, yeah, we Keep It Cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's been it's been. Fun. Yes, yeah, you, you've you've seen plenty of success. So I guess how how is your journey kind of. Um, you know, defined you or define yourself as a man over the last few years. I mean, you're a country boy, is that correct? You, you, you... Yeah, can't, yeah, from Horsham country. Before. Yeah, that's right, from Horsham. Yeah. So, how's how's the transition from you know when you're in you know young young man in Horsham to then moving to Melbourne and um, you know building building your own business? How how have you kind of handled that, and how have you um, you know taken on those those different responsibilities. Um, yeah, look, it, it happened all pretty quickly. Like, I'd, I'd literally just decided um, to, I just decided to give basketball a miss for a while and play footy and focus on footy. And the idea was to go to uni um, after having a gap year, living back home, and, and just suss out what I wanted to do. I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do at all. Um, <laughs> and then within like a matter of days. Um, I was li- like about a week. I was living in Melbourne for basketball, so everything happened real quick. And I had yeah. the of living away from home. Um, never had any intentions of moving to Melbourne. That was probably the last place I wanted to move. Now, now I wouldn't, I wouldn't live anywhere else in Australia. But, um, but yeah, so I had to like learn everything on the fly, like pretty quickly. Which in hindsight was was really good. It was um, it, it taught me heaps. Uh, moved mm. in with um, someone who's now one of my best mates and. Yeah, just had to figure it all out pretty quickly, which, um, which, yeah, I'm glad it did happen that way because, you know, you yeah. see, it, see it the other way around where, um, yeah, and to be perfectly honest, how I was living when I was at home, I was doing not a great deal, um, yeah. training and going to school and 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 a bit of work here and there. So, um, yeah. having to do everything for myself, even just simple things, literally like just doing your own washing and cooking and cleaning and and all paying bills and all that type of stuff. Um, teaches you to grow up pretty quickly so yeah yeah it, it worked out well and um i guess i just learned a lot like since i since i moved here um not even just moving away from home but just things that haven't worked out things that have worked out um you know meeting certain people and all that type of stuff that's just been a really good learning curve so it's definitely helped helped get get me to where where i am at the moment which is um, which is not even close to where i would like to be but it's been yeah. the feels like since I've left school, there's so much that's happened. Um, yeah. Which, you know, I've had to stay at home and, and didn't didn't move away and, and had had that gap year. And who knows, I may have just stayed home and got comfortable with where I was. And I don't think I yeah. would have, like knowing, my, like knowing my personality, I don't think I would have, but you just never know. So it yeah. just all kind of like just happened the way it did and um, I'm glad it did. Yeah. And and coming from Horsham too, how's... um. How was the transition, I guess, from your old belief system growing up there versus your current belief system around, you know, what it means um, to look after yourself? And, I mean, obviously you played basketball growing up, so you were probably fit on top of your nutrition and then you stepped into the PT space. But has how you've looked after your, your you know, your mental meditation and your personal developments kind of changed over the years and you've put in those practices What's been the biggest change for you or how has that whole space of looking after yourself changed? Yeah, it's changed a lot. Like I said before, my only real responsibility was going to school and going to training and then that's it. And yeah. Then you here and then you got all the responsibility in the world, which, which I'm, like I said, I'm very glad it happened that way. Um, but think, yeah, things have definitely, definitely changed a lot. I think the biggest thing that I've learned since I moved here is how much – you know, it sounds really cliche, but like you're the product of your environment. So, and, and like, um, we're just cap- capable of so much more than what we think we are or what we tell ourselves we can do is what we will do. So mm. it's easy to stay in the same environment with the same people and, and under the same circumstances and then just get comfortable with it, get used to it. And then you don't really see anything outside of that. So you don't, you never open up to the possibilities of what could, could happen outside of that. So yeah. getting, you know, getting away and getting a, a whole different perspective of um, what's possible and what you can and can do and 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 the possibilities out there for me has been the biggest eye opener. And you know, you mentioned meditation. Anyone that knows me 
now, if you if you know me now, you would you would um, have heard me talk about meditation. But before I got into it, like I'd be the, I was the last person that would have that would have tried it. Like I uh, I can barely sit still. Like a uh, mindfulness thing was not really anything I'd ever gone down that path before. And mm. then you know I'm so glad that I have. And now I tell I I, I was, everyone has their own choice. They can do what they want. But like I would recommend it for absolutely everybody. So. Mindfulness meditation, um, you know, learning how to run my own business, learning the hard way about not sorting out finances and all this type of stuff, and paying your own bills and and just taking accountability for um, your own your own life, um, yeah. has just been the biggest game changer. Because, like I said, if I had to stay stay back home, even if I had have moved out, and you know, it, you just never know. Like I think, like I said, you're product of your environment, and for some people, and depending on what your goal is, um, you know, for some people, just just doing the same thing over and over again and just and just living a nice and comfortable life is is perfect and that's that's, that's fine um but like i said i've always kind of been pretty ambitious in what i want to do so being mm-hmm. able to see the possibility of what is um truly capable then uh, yeah. yeah that's been a big win yeah and obviously a big thing here um the momentum what we're trying to build is that um you know, is that capable man or, you know, our tagline is being be a better man. So, you know, you're constantly looking at ways that you can improve yourself, whether that's your mindset, um, you know, your nutrition, your your training, um, you know, a meditation practice, um, and then also more on the personal development side of things of, you know, what does it mean to be a man um, and how masculinity is slowly shaping and changing um, yeah. over the course of, like, you know, how, where society goes. So with that in mind, what was what was the biggest challenge or what was um, kind of a low point for you that you had to really, like, overcome and, and um, you know, kind of go through all the tools in your toolkit to, to kind of come out the other side? Is there a point in time where you can think of, like, yeah, I was, but I was struggling then and um, managed to get out? There's definitely been a few. Um, there's definitely been like a couple of really big ones um, for me that that kind of like brought me to, I guess, what you call that that low point, which which teaches you pretty quickly, you know, coping mechanisms, things that you can do to to try and avoid getting back to that that um, position again, or you know, do your best to to manage things and and then give yourself tools. Which is the biggest thing that I've found is that by doing personal development by listening to things like this by meeting new people and just experiencing things yourself, you build up a bit of a toolkit, which if you don't experience it, if you don't go out and, and get out of your comfort zone, you just don't have those tools. So when things do, you know, when things do hit the fan, you don't know, like it's a lot harder to deal with. Whereas now yeah. going through a few different things and, you know, a couple of those have been like personal, but um, one easy to talk about um, would be initially the, the ankle reconstruction. So that was, that was the end of 2013. Um, yeah. By that point, I was really happy with where my basketball was at. And also, like, my only ambition was to play basketball. Like, nothing else mattered apart from that. And that's what mm. I was doing. So, to go from that to then having, like, not, none of that at all whatsoever. For, and, yeah. You know, when, you, when I talk about it in perspective, it was only a short period of time. Like, three, four months, I couldn't do anything really. But in that period of time, like, that taught me that there's just so much more to to life and basketball if that hadn't have happened you know um in the last kind of 12 to 18 months like i've been um you know really lucky to to meet my partner danielle and one thing that she's like taught me a lot is that everything happens for a reason so looking back at things now i can see that that a lot of the stuff that happened at the time and i was listening to a, an audio book today actually and um the author gabby bernstein talks about how every time there's like a setback or something that seems like it's a you know, catastrophe or whatever at the time is all just pointing you in another direction, like pushing you away from, from something that's not going to be for you or not going to work out and push you in the right direction. Yeah. So if you see everything as a bit of a lesson, then I, I think it's really valuable. And, you know, with the ankle reconstruction, if that hadn't have happened, um, like I wouldn't be doing anything that I'm doing now because I would still be trying to play basketball. Whereas yeah. I was forced to do something different, I, I found found like what I was truly passionate about, which I kind of on, in the back of my mind already knew, but I was just mm. like I talked about before. I was so used to doing the same thing over and over again, yeah. Um, that I wasn't willing to see outside of that, and mm. all of my life was revolved around that. So once I got out of that little bubble and saw what I was more so passionate about, 
that's when things started to to change. And then there's been a, re- a lot of really cool opportunities that I've been lucky to to have, um, all because of having to have an ankle reconstruction. So yeah, you know, yeah. looking at as looking at it as the worst thing that's ever happened to yeah. now looking at that and literally pretty much saying that's the best thing that's ever happened. I mean, yeah. It's, um, yeah. so yeah, when things don't go my way now, um, obviously I'm, everyone's, everyone's human. So when it happens at the time, it's, it's hard to, to not see it as a negative, but yeah. I think now I've just gotten a lot better at, at looking at it um, with a bit more perspective and being able to see it just as a lesson or um, as a way to see that something better is coming or, um, yeah. or just try and try and find some form of positives and wins from, from everything and then just move on and not, not dwell yeah. on what you control. Yeah, it's funny that perspective, um, once you've moved out of it, you can kind of look back and go, oh, fuck, okay, that was actually really good for me or that built, as you said, resilience because that's the only way that anyone can build resilience is going through the hard times. No, no one has gone win after win after win and become more resilient as a, as a result of that. And, um, and I can... Really win. You don't really learn that much from your wins. Yeah. I, um, on, on my podcast a, a couple of months back, I interviewed one of my clients who, who's really big in business and he said something that kind of stuck with me. He's like, he's never really learned much, if anything, from his wins. Yeah. Everything he's learned in life and business has all been from either losses or things that just haven't worked out well. So when you look at it that way, yeah. um, it doesn't. It, it, the way that this is worded doesn't sound right, but the more, like, you want to fail as much as possible. Yeah. You want to yeah. reach roadblocks as much as possible because every time you do, you're learning something to then add to your toolkit, like you said before. Yeah. And then move forward. If you're never failing, then you're not really yeah. you're not pushing yourself or getting outside of your comfort zone anywhere near enough to be yeah. making any difference anyway. Yeah. And it's like anything in life. If, if you were striving for, for perfection, say basketball, for example, and you were like, I just never can miss a single shot, so all you did was do layups you wouldn't develop any other part of your game. And so you wouldn't be able to be a complete basketball player. And that's so true in all aspects of life. It's, if you're not going out there and stumbling here and failing over there, then you're not actually becoming a more well-rounded person or a more knowledgeable person in whatever field that you need to be more knowledgeable in. Yeah, and I think even even with that, like um, over the last kind of few months, I've looked at it almost a little bit differently. Like I think... You definitely need to get outside of your comfort zone and as often as possible. But also, like, if you know that you're completely shit ass at something or, or you don't enjoy it at all, then it's also not, like, a great idea to get in the mindset of, like, I have to work on the things that I'm my weakest at all day, every day, because you'll never be happy. You'll never enjoy it. Yeah. Whereas if you know what your strengths are, then you can still get outside of your comfort zone with your strengths. Like, I think... Yeah. You- your strengths, work on your strengths. And obviously there's things that, that you need to work on that you may not be as strong at. But yeah. there's no point, at the same time, there's no point rocking up day in, day out, or at least trying to and doing things you just have no interest in at, or that just watching yourself not even progress and not even have any motivation to progress because it's just not what your strengths are yeah. at all. So I think if you can play your strengths and get out of your comfort zone, then that's when um, that's when like good things happen. Yeah, having that... That um, I think it's Gary V that talks about all the time around doubling down on your strengths and then figuring out what base knowledge you need in your weakness. But then, like, don't try to turn your weakness into a strength. Just double down your strengths, figure out where you need to plug the certain holes in your weaknesses and then, you know, just keep moving forward. Because as you said, um, and, you know, in our business even right now, we're having to do a lot of stuff that we're... You know, we do not. We don't want to do. We prefer the. We prefer the, the chats, the face to face, the events. And we can't do any of that at the moment. So we're having to do a lot of like email marketing and all that kind of stuff. But it's as you said at the start, Paul. It's you know forced us to focus on things that we needed to focus on anyway. Um, and so now finding that balance around okay, who's what role? You know, who what? You know, do you do this? And then you also need to do. 20% of what you like, but you know what? At the moment, it's going to be 80% of stuff that you don't want to do because, you know, we, we have to do it. So um, yeah. it's a it's a really good point. Delegate, delegating certain things, like time is is pretty much our most valuable asset, which is another thing that yeah. goes a lot. So if you're spending all of your day working on trying to, you know, like me, I've, and I've, I made these mistakes early on. Like I tried to do all the stuff that I was doing myself. So I'd try and build this website, which I was just doing my head in. 
took me a whole day to do something that maybe if I just hired someone, they would get done in 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that whole day could have been put towards me actually doing something that's, that's going to help my clients or work mm. on my craft or whatever, but it's, it's just wasted trying to do something that, that I'm never going to be doing anyway. So just be mm. willing to, to delegate some of those things so you can put time into what actually matters. Yeah, and and through this whole process, what are what are some of the big male like role models that you've had either growing up? I, obviously, I can see Jordan in the background. I, I assume he was he was a big one for you with the basketball background. But what what role models do you look to? Um, you know, as as you're progressing in business and as you're kind of growing up into the man that you want to be. Um, well, definitely my dad. Um, yeah, dad's definitely probably the biggest one and then um you know it, I, I definitely had like sporting idols mj being one of them um and there's a number of different like people that i looked up to in the the sporting world as well but to be perfectly honest there's ne never really anyone that i like just based like everything off or tried to learn everything off but since i've i've um started becoming a bit more familiar with the personal development and and stepped into that world there definitely has been people in that regard that um that that I've taken a lot of value from and just try and like stick to the few people that I that I kind of that I enjoy their content and and not like spread myself too thin because I think especially now when when you do start to get into the personal development stuff or listening to audio books and podcasts you can go one of two ways you can like fixate on just one thing and never be open to listening to anything else yeah. or you can go the way where all you do is consume content and do nothing with it. So, like, there's been a few guys, you know, guys like Robin Sharma, who's been a big one. Um, yeah. Even even someone like, um, I don't necessarily agree with everything he does, but someone like Grant Cardone, like, he, just certain aspects of what he does. Like, he, he's yeah. working, he's, like, his drive and stuff for, to, to get stuff done was something that resonated with me a lot. And then and then from, like, literally just, just the people I try and surround myself with since then, yeah. like, just trying and something from absolutely everyone and um similar to what i try and do with my knowledge with fitness and track and um with health and fitness sorry is not just base everything off one person or one theory like try and take from everyone there's everyone has something to offer regardless of whether you think they do or whether they don't um yeah you can learn from everyone you kind of need to be open to to learning new things and not just be so fixated on the one thing that you're not willing to see anything outside of that. Um, so yeah. And you've got some, a couple of good points there because you said you don't, you don't have to agree with everything that one person says. You can no. take like the nuggets of gold. Oh, I like it. I like that. Okay. I don't like that, but I'm not focused on that. I think that's really important when looking at role models or um, looking at people, you know, if you're not fortunate enough to have people in your immediate circle that you can, kind of go to for advice or whatever, but picking out which ones and, and being really deliberate about it, okay, I'm going to take that piece of information and that piece of information because it's it's such a great point. I think people think that as you said, like you like Grant Cardone, oh so you must like everything he puts out. You must like you must like everything that he does. And it's like, no, I just certain things I really enjoy and and I think that's really important when picking, you know, people to learn off of. Yeah. hundred percent. And and as I said, every, you can learn something from pretty much absolutely everyone. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, when it comes to, I've found anyway, in terms of what you're like, what you're trying to master, like for me in the health and fitness area, if I'm just taking something from absolutely everyone, which is to be honest, what a lot of the time the clients that come to me have done, you get something mm -hmm. from absolutely every everywhere, and and you just confuse yourself. Yeah. So. It, unless you're not, unless you're doing something with the the content that you consume, then it's no good anyway. Like I got into the habit for a while there of reading a book, and like just being in the mindset of like the more I read, the better, or like the more I read, the smarter I'll get. All this type of stuff. So I'd read a book and then go to the next one, and then you wouldn't even, I wouldn't even implement anything from the one I just read. So yeah, now yeah. I, I try not to do that. Like I, I read less. Um, once I have read or listened to an audio book, I'll try and implement what I've just taken in. Yeah. And, and into and that. Otherwise, there's no point consuming content for the for the sake of doing it, or yeah. it, it's just pointless. Very similar to to being busy for the sake of being busy. There's a big difference yeah. between productivity and being busy. Yeah, they're great points, definitely. 
Um, I want to shift it for the last, you know, last few minutes that we've got you for, and I want to shift the conversation back towards, um, you know, masculinity and and what it means to be a man, and and you know, what what do you think manhood stands for today? Um, and your ideas around masculinity. What does it mean to be a man? Yeah, it's a, it's something that I've never really like put that much thought to until you messaged me today. Um, yeah. Then when I was thinking about it before, I kind of wrote wrote down like four words, and and this is not necessarily like everything it means to me, but this is just four things that kind of stuck out. Yeah. Those four things were um, were respect, um, vulnerability, responsibility, and work ethic. And for me. Like I just think respect is a huge thing for absolutely everyone. Like I said before, if you're not if you don't show respect to everyone, you're missing out on potentially building relationships, learning from other yeah. people, certain things. And and I think that's just so huge. Responsibility, like understanding that you're responsible for absolutely everything that has happened um, in your yeah. life, can be a pretty hard thing to pretty hard thing to accept. But you are, and and you know just taking responsibility for everything moving forward as well like if you stuff up you stuff up it's not a matter of just trying to cover it up and move on and, and pretend that didn't happen like just take yeah. responsibility for the good and the bad i think is such a big one work ethic for me is something that's just been like just a set in stone since since very early on and i just think it's um it's so important may not may not be for everyone but i think it is um for me and like what i kind of see as you said like masculinity as um and then the other one there is vulnerability i think that's something yeah. that that you know um over the past year or two is is becoming more and more um common and you know particularly um in thanks to to people like yourself and and people that are sharing content and um and doing initiatives like this and and um and speaking up about their issues or um not being afraid to show their weaknesses and just trying to make out as if everything's always perfect and you know like it it's just not the case. So um, yeah. I found like the more vulnerable you can be, the more not only you'll learn and grow yourself, but the more relatable it is to everyone else. Mm. And the more other people can learn from it. Like you think about every book that you've read or every inspiring movie or whatever, whatever it is, it's all yeah. like from someone else's vulnerability to share. Yeah. yeah. Vulnerability to share their stuff ups or their stories. And, um, and it's just, I mean, if you, if you're, that naive to think that that um, that everything you do is just perfect, or or that um, that people are going to believe that you never stuff up, or you've never got any issues, or whatever. I think it, you're just doing yourself. You're not doing yourself any favors. So that's that, so those four words there. I think yeah, responsibility, yeah. Um, respect, work ethic, and then um, vulnerability are the kind of four things that I I, I would base it off. And um, you know, and the responsibility thing as well as taking responsibility for what you do. It's also yeah, you know, as a man as well, if you've got a partner, if you've got kids, if you've got a job, like that is your responsibility. And I think in in that word also comes along with accountability as well. You've got to be accountable to yeah. yourself, to those that are relying on you, to to you know your client, like me with my clients, and and responsibility of of showing up every day and and just getting it done. Yeah, mate, I, I love those four words, and you know a big thing that we're all about here at Momentum is, um, you know, that integrated aspect of, of what I'll use your work, of the accountability, responsibility, work ethic side of the masculine as well as that ability to be vulnerable and also heart-driven and, and, you know, in tune with your emotions. How has your um, definition of what it means to be a man changed from when you were, you know, growing up? Because I know personally when I was you know, in my teenage years and, and early 20s, it was very much this distorted view of, well, I either need to be really good at sports or I need to be funny or I need to be, um, you know, I need to be the guy that goes out and gets heaps of girls because that's what makes me a man. Um, I was, I'm just curious with your journey how it's changed over time for you, if you had a similar one or, or if you were kind of from the get-go, responsibility, vulnerability um, and, and all the other ones. Definitely not. Like, probably similar to you, like, growing up playing sport and always being surrounded by that. Like, you kind of define, like, it was almost like my whole life. Like, 
I, just, I was like under the impression that I was just defined by what I did. So playing basketball. If I didn't play basketball or footy, like I was just, no, like everyone just knew me for that type of thing. Yeah. So in my mind, like, if I wasn't doing that, like I, I don't have anything outside of that. So even when, you know, thinking about it now, like probably once I had that ankle reconstruction, I didn't have basketball. That that was probably what made things so rough initially. I'm like, that kind of, there goes my like whole identity. Your identity, yeah. If I don't have, I don't have basketball or if I don't have, gym or whatever like what what am i what is my purpose like i don't really have any purpose outside of that and it's that's pretty that's like a bit of a slippery slope like i think a lot of people are like that um, you see yeah. it a lot with athletes you see it so much with athletes once they finish up their career that is like well if, I, if i'm not playing playing footy or yeah. whatever, i don't have any so that's mm. why i think it's so important that that you're you're putting time into everything outside like it's very important to know your purpose and have your passion and, and know your why but there yeah. also be stuff that gets done outside of that as well. So then when, you know, when she did a fan like it has recently with coronavirus, yeah. if all of a sudden you don't have the one thing that you do every single day, like what do you have? You need to have something else. Otherwise it's, it, it has a massive effect on your headspace. So it doesn't really, um, doesn't really answer your question, but it definitely has changed. No, no yeah, that's, mate, that's spot on because... If we, if our identity becomes tied up in one thing, and that's we're like, well, I am the basketball player, I am the footy player, and then as you perfectly put it, when that gets taken away, you you sit there and you're like, hang on, who who am I now? Like, what? If I don't play basketball, if I'm not playing footy, and like I'm I'm no like what? Who am I? What do I stand for? And and then that can, and what we're finding is that's what kind of propels men once they hit that bottom rung, well, who am I? Then they start to work on their values, their purpose, those those other aspects to their life that you mentioned. Um, so, yeah, I think you put it perfectly, mate. Yeah, I think it, it, the sooner you can get on top of that, the better. Like, to not the, – obviously, the idea is to, to not reach that rock bottom place yeah. before you can figure that out. Like, so that's why it is important, I think, yeah. anyway, yeah, to step away from whatever your – your normal world is to be able to do stuff outside of that so that when that when and if that is taken away you do have something else and not you don't feel like you're you're starting from absolute scratch yeah yeah absolutely and my final question mate um what has been uh the biggest lesson that you've learned um you know within your relationship now with danielle the biggest thing i've learned yeah um, because that's because to give context to that question, you know, we we talk so much about relationships being such a mirror, and you know, when you're in a when you're in a really positive um, relationship, it can really level you up really quickly because you're forced to kind of deal with the shit, or you know, the relationship breaks down. So, you know, what kind of lessons have you learned through the last? I think you said year and a half, two years almost. Um, you know, being in in that you know really positive growth relationship um well i think there's like a few few things as you said before um like responsibility is a huge thing um accountability to to your partner um honesty is is a is a very big thing and then also just like understanding that you're particularly early days when when things are just absolutely perfect and and everything's like all, all you want to do is hang out like you don't you're not thinking about absolutely anything else and then you got to realize that later on like you need to make sure that um you are constantly still going to be be there for, I guess, each other um, when things aren't going as well, but also yeah. like support each other in whatever whatever decision they make to, to whatever they're doing, um, and mm. then as well like making sure that it should feel it should feel easy. Like that's the one thing with Danielle is that it's just it just feels like I generally just want to want to spend time with her, and, and that's how it should be. Um, yeah, it should feel easy, but also like in that positive state as you said like when you are in such a good headspace like it's, it's amazing like how much better everything else gets as well so i think yeah. if you're in, in the habit or like just in the in the um in the cycle of just thinking that if you do feel like shit all the time that that's how it's just got to be like it's just not going to change yeah yeah when, when you look at it in perspective you're just like well no wonder everything else was shit out as well so um communication is just a big communication um yeah. response yeah, and then and then just honestly, and then just making sure that it's um that it's in, enjoyable for both both people and and just supporting. That's handy. Yeah. yeah. 
And have you have you found it? Because um, you're very you're. I mean, obviously you're you're big in, on Instagram. And you're very public with your relationship. It's not like you keep it a secret or you're just business. Yeah. You know, you're very much lifestyle as well in your account. How have you found? Was that difficult for you having to show up? And have you ever found that tough with you know? I find certain groups of mates can really hang hang shit on their mates for you know posting a photo of, you know them on date night or whatever and um you know have you found that difficult showing up there or you you more just like whatever i don't pay attention to that noise and i've got a good group of mates around me not at all i mean there's a few parts of that like the first part is that one of the biggest changes i made early on which which probably probably should have mentioned earlier is that like i used to really care about what other people thought and then it is yeah. point couldn't couldn't care less and, yeah. and it should like and i mean as well when you look at it from the other other side like if you're if you've got a partner that you're you're in love with or or someone that you love spending time with but you're afraid to to show off that you that, that you feel that way in front of your friends then maybe they're not your friends um, yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe they should maybe they're not the people that you want to surround yourself with anyway so yeah. absolutely like not at all like i'm extremely proud to be um with with danielle so uh, like you know on, on certain parts of it you there's definitely like you don't want to just be constantly just showing absolutely anything and everything you're doing yeah. together. And, like you got to have some form of um, privacy and and, yeah. and keep some things to yourself and also enjoy the moment. Like that's one part of social media which I just don't really like is that you know half the time people aren't even enjoying like what they're actually doing at the time because they're so worried yeah. about getting a perfect photo or perfect video that a moment yeah. that's meant to be enjoyable and fun is just spent consumed by what you're going to post on Instagram. So um, definitely hasn't been any issues with, with sharing it. Um, more than happy to. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm batting well above my average. Very, very lucky. <laughs> yeah, no. That's very true, mate. Oh, thank you very much, mate. I will I will let you go. Thanks for giving up your time on a Sunday night. Um, really appreciate it, mate. So thank you. Pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it, man. And we'll uh, we'll catch up soon, mate, for another legs session. Yeah, wow. Well, after the last time, I'm surprised you come back. <laughs> it's taken me six months. The lift's out of order. I don't know how you'll get down. <laughs> All right, tell me when it's back in order and we'll go train. <laughs> Thanks, mate. mate.